Good morning, I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. Today is Wednesday, I believe, yeah, June 8th, 2020. <laughs> I'm pre-recording these for you because I'm going to be out of town, um, but I wanted to make sure that you were able to at least hear the Lord's Word and have some catechesis on that Word. Of course, I'd encourage you to I use this in the context of praying the Congregation of Prayer as was included in our service folder, available on our website as well. Um, so pretty much all you need is a hymnal, the Congregation of Prayer, and the, uh, the bulletin from Sunday that has the prayer request on the back. Right? So if you have those three, you're ready to go, and you can do it um, perfectly well without me. Um, but the catechesis might be helpful. So our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 30. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. And you said, No, for we will flee on horses, therefore you shall flee. And we shall ride on swift horses, therefore those who pursue you shall be swift. One thousand shall flee at the threat of one, and the threat of five shall flee, you shall flee till you are left as a pole on top of a mountain and as a banner on a hill. A pole as in a tree stripped of its branches, by the way. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner any more. But your eyes shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whether you turn to the left. You will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold. You will throw them away as an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away. Then he will give you rain as your seed. I think this is as far as I wanted to go. Yeah, no. Then he'll give you rain for your seed, which you will sow the ground and bread of the increase of the earth. There ends the reading. Now, our reading for catechesis is the continuation of St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning in verse 9. Now, when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? That they might accuse him. Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value, then, is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. But then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them, not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory in the name of his of, and in, in his name <laughs> gentiles will trust all right so now where was jesus he was in one of their synagogues right uh, namely the synagogue probably in capernaum right who was there yeah a man with a withered hand now this is a continuation again of what we heard yesterday What question did the Pharisees ask Jesus? Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, right? 
Again, uh, Matthew is helpful here. It gives us a little parenthetical note. Why? That they might accuse him. But how did the question get turned on them? Yeah, he shows them that they are not people of mercy, mercy like the Father's mercy, that even they would rescue a sheep if it fell into the pit on a Sabbath. Why do you think Jesus uses this animal, that of a sheep? Yeah, sheep in the, in the scriptures is a term for those who believe and need a shepherd. Yeah. Uh, why did the man stretch out his hand? <laughs> At the word of Jesus, of course. Jesus told him to do it. Now, how did the Pharisees respond to this healing? Quite predictably, I think. They went out and plotted how they might, wow, apoluomi, destroy him, right? Yeah, this is, this is demonic work here. What did Jesus do when the Pharisees wanted to kill him? Yeah, he withdrew from there. Um, this is similar to what he might say in John, my hour has not yet come, right? Yeah, they will destroy him or seek to destroy him, um, but it will be at the time and place of his choosing. Yeah. Um, and then, why did the people follow him? Yeah, because of the healing that he gave to them all, right? They followed him to receive the same kind of healing. What did Jesus warn them, though? Again, not to make him known. All right, so you, here you might think of what we read back in Matthew uh, 8, verse 4, when he said, uh, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift. A man born uh, with leprosy. Or uh, when he opened the two blind men's eyes, right? And he warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. He'll say it again um, when they come down from the mountain of transfiguration in Matthew 17, when he says, Tell no one the son, the vision, and here's the key, until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Where do the words, here in this long quote from Matthew, this is rare, a long quote, uh, where do they come? This is from Isaiah 42, 1 through 4. Um, Isaiah 40 through 66, that whole, if you like, book, Isaiah's, I think, five books, if you, depending on how you divide it. Um, those are called the servant songs. The servant songs. You know Isaiah 52 verse th- and 53, chapter 52, 53, called the suffering servant song, right? When had the Father declared Jesus to be his servant? Behold, my servant, he says here, but when, did, when had the Father actually said that about Jesus? Yeah. Back in um, Matthew 3 at the baptism, Jesus in the Jordan, he calls him, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, my beloved, my servant. Why does it say that Jesus will not quarrel? He will not quarrel, nor will he cry out. Here we want to look forward to Matthew 26, don't we? Yeah, when, well, we should probably just go there. The high priest arose and said to him, Do you not do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But Jesus kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yeah. He would remain silent even when he was falsely accused, and they let him off to be crucified. What's the importance of verse 21 in the context of Matthew's gospel? And if you've been with us each day, as we've been going through Matthew, this probably is uh, quite apparent. Yeah, especially remember back in, say, chapter 2. Remember what happened in chapter 2? Visit of the Magi, yes. And what's their characteristic? They are Gentiles, that's right. Right. So here, in his name, Gentiles will trust. We had this already um, back in chapter 2. We'll see it at the end. Go and make disciples of all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, Matthew's stress from the beginning to the end is that Jesus came for all nations of the earth. 
Remember we talked about this with the genealogy of Jesus. It mentions uh, Rahab and Tamar and Ruth, right? And Uriah's wife, who was a Hittite, Bathsheba, right? These foreign women who are brought into the genealogy of Jesus. And the grandmothers of Jesus. What's the importance of the of that those three words, that phrase, in his name, in his onoma? Yeah, what is it about the you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, right? His name is um well it's it it is connected to a saving activity, right? It's a baptismal phrase in his name that is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Gentiles will trust. So it's pointing forward again to the end. Um, And many were baptized, say, at the day of Pentecost in the name of Jesus. Now meditation on this text. Jesus came to bring rest, that is, to restore the Sabbath to men who suffer under the curse of sin. The Pharisees are so bound up in legalism that they forget the way of mercy, even attempting to prevent the healing of this man. Jesus came for sheep who hear his voice. He came to pull them out of the pit, that is, from the condemnation of the law. How valuable are sheep? They are the sheep whom he will purchase with his own holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Those who hear his words and believe are like this man with the shriveled hand who heard the word of Christ and stretched forth his hand. Those who reject the word of Christ are like the Pharisees and can only produce death and burden men with the curse of the law. So there are those who want Jesus to be a new Moses who tells us what to do, rather than the one who clothes us with his own righteousness. After all the language about rest, Jesus is once more being presented in the context of baptism. At the baptism of Jesus, he was declared the servant, and the Spirit descended upon him so that by placing him, his name upon us in our baptism, we might have, again, perfect rest. Jesus comes to lead justice to victory, that is, to bestow upon us the righteousness of God. In baptism, we are joined to his name, and the Son chooses to reveal his Father to us. The Father reveals to us as his children, that Jesus is the servant who proclaims justice to the nations and gives us hope. It's a meditation on the text from uh, Pastor Carl Fabritius. So good to have you with us here today on this uh, Wednesday, June the 8th, yes, 2020. Uh, This is our congregation at prayer. I come to you every day in the morning, and sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. And uh, right now, these are pre-recorded, so again, I encourage you to go and continue um, by praying or confessing the creed, praying the prayer, um, praying for those in need, right, and trusting in your baptism. Lord be with you all, and we'll see you again tomorrow.